Welcome into the channel, everyone. Today, we're gonna to talk about a little bit of that spatter, that splatter, those BBs, that buckshot, those boogers with the dual shield flux core process. You shouldn't be getting them. Let's talk about it. Now, weld spatter is one of those things that's in pretty much every weld process. Even TIG, if you don't turn your gas on, you're gonna get chunks of little BBs of metal to fly off from the weld pool and land on your material. While this is something that's natural and happens in pretty much all your processes, some processes mitigate that just by the way they're designed, like dual shield flux core. Dual shield flux core is made to really be kind of a spatter-free process. When I say spatter-free, I mean not like these big chunks of uh, globs of metal that are coming off and sticking to your plate. You're probably still going to have some BBs from your flux core process, but there are some ways that if you don't do your flux core right, you are gonna get those really big BBs. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. How you get those BBs, how you avoid those BBs, and how you can get rid of those BBs. Cause at the end of the day, it's a quality control thing. Even if it's in your garage, it's just a poor craftsmanship kind of thing. All the way up until they get into code shops where if the BBs are left in there, they can't even ultrasound test. They can't use their ultrasound machine and move it around the metal because it's not smooth. It has all those BBs on there. We're gonna be doing a little bit of welding on this. I call it a pressure vessel simulator. From my past, I've done some pressure vessels in the past. We didn't actually use dual shield flux core. We used pulse MIG. However, that's what we're going to talk about today. And this is what I'm familiar with. So I've stabbed a couple nozzles in this 12 inch pipe. I think this is some three inch into some 12 inch here. The first thing that we're going to go over is our volts and wire feed speed and how that can affect your BBs when it comes to this process. The next thing that we're going to do is check our polarity. It only really likes to be run one type of polarity. And if you switch it, you're likely to get some BBs. No prep whatsoever. We'll see what that does if it makes the weld pool a little bit more erratic. I know we had a video on welding over rust and we kind of failed with the dual shield process because the wire wasn't right. So we'll see what happens, see if we get some more BBs in the process. And one of the last things that we're gonna do in order to get more BBs with this process is change our travel angle. That's one of the critical things, no matter what you're setting to, if your travel angle is wrong, it's likely you're gonna be throwing some BBs. And then finally, after I've welded enough to hopefully get a decent amount of practice, I'm gonna show you guys a proper weld and how to get almost BB free welds with dual shield flux core. Let's see what the setup is. Okay, so check it out. We've got the Cyclone 263PI. We've used this machine a bit. I've never used it for the flux core with the gas process. So that's the dual shield, right? Dual shield's got the flux on the inside of the wire as well as an additional shielding gas. It really adds a ton of benefits when it comes to out of position welding and having a really hot process with high deposition rates. The flux, the gas combo really makes this an ideal process for a lot of reasons. Speaking of gas, we've got some 7525 here. This is the Arcal flux. Now, obviously, everything's built into the top here, and I believe there's a two way check valve in there, so no atmosphere can get in. Whereas, if like a normal bottle sitting in where I live, like in Houston, it's an empty bottle and someone just left it open, well, atmosphere can get all in there, moisture, all that good stuff, get to the sides, and this is more of a guarantee of a cleaner gas. So, we've got some 7525 here with that Arcal flux. We've got our wire feeder set up with some 045 dual shield flux core. We got the knurled rollers on there. We've got our Abbey MIG gun set up with the right consumables, 045 contact tips, all that good stuff. All we got to do is put on our Sentinel hood, my outlaw cap, maybe set my shade up, being that flux core is a brighter process, something more like 12. Should put that respirator on first and of course my Cayman gloves. Now normally with flux core it being a hotter process you might like some thicker gloves. It's all about knowing where that heat is and not putting your hands there. So we're still gonna be able to run some thinner gloves like those 1600s. I am working on this rollout wheel which it is sturdy. It looks like I got everything but I'm gonna run a jack stand underneath it. And of course I got my steel toes on. I don't know if you'd seen these guys, these bad boys right here, but they're ready to go, man. They got the ratchet on there for really getting things tight. And of course the composite toe, they're freaking waterproof. These boots right here, they're like that. Here, hold my hood and watch this. Now the first thing we're gonna go over, like I mentioned, is the voltage and the wire feed speed. So I've got my volts turned down and my wire feed turned up just a hair. No matter what kind of ratio that you did, if you have your volts too low, or your wire feed too high. You know, you could be running really hot in the volts, but if the wire's still too high, you're gonna probably catch some BBs. I'm gonna make three passes on each nozzle. I'm gonna do one, two, three, so like a 2B cap, right? All the way around these. There's not a whole lot that I'm gonna teach you guys. We're just gonna see the volume of spatter uh, by adjusting our voltage and wire feed. I've got my respirator on. I know some of y'all really hate when I talk through this thing, so we're just gonna weld. And I also want you guys to remember what I said about the prep. You should really only prep what you need to weld. If you prep outside of that, it's likely you're gonna get more spatter. Let's do it.
Whew, that weld looks like butt. Now I'll definitely start off with that looks pretty bad. But not as bad as I thought for running freaking 23 volts and 400 inches a minute. Everything looks cold. It felt cold. It felt chunky. Having a hard time melting everything. And you can see after three passes of making this weld, we've got BBs all over the place, man. Again, this is just running with your voltage too low or your wire too high. In this case, it was a kind of a little bit of both. If your settings are off, you're going to get some BBs. Next up, we're gonna switch the polarities in this machine. To change the polarity in this machine, it's not too bad. Just grab yourself a 10 millimeter socket in this positive terminal, running your MIG gun to your positive. And now we're gonna move it to DCEN. Self-shielded flux core, self-shield like no additional gas compared to this one. It actually prefers to be what run on this polarity. And if you take that type of wire and run it on positive instead of negative, it freaks out with spatter. It is one of the most spatteriest spattery processes ever when you put it on the wrong polarity. So I imagine if we take this, move our ground down to the positive so that our gun is into the negative, and now we're running DC negative on a wire that's supposed to be DC positive, I reckon we're gonna get a lot of spatter. The weld's laying flatter. But more buckshot. Mm. No, the start is just awful every time. That's a lot of BBs. It was welding a lot better as far as laying a bead down than the voltage being too cold or wire too high. But again, with that polarity being the wrong way, we've got just at least twice as many BBs on this as we do the voltage being incorrect. But the weld kind of lays down better with some porosity. Anyway, these two ways are surefire ways to get a bunch of freaking BBs. Get your settings wrong and run the wrong polarity. Essentially, they're kind of the same thing. We need to get this machine back to some proper settings and back on the right polarity because the next thing we're going to talk about is no prep. And is it that big a deal for a process like dual shield flux core? Well, that right there is the definition of a problem. Now, I wanna stop for a second before we continue and get a good look at this. We've got a ton of porosity, and it is because of the lack of prep. What really happened, I cut these holes with the plasma cutter, and it had all that bad dross and the nastiness from the plasma cutter that was still left there. Welding over that stuff is just no good for pretty much any process. But you can also see all the nice things about keeping the rust and the nastiness around is all the BBs are just literally bouncing off of it. Molten metal, hot metal likes clean metal, so if there's clean metal, it usually likes to stick to it but if there's not clean metal it's just going to keep rolling off we're going to weld over this crap anyway just experiment a little bit now as far as welding on unprepped material we saw that first pass that was disgusting full of bug holes and nastiness i was fairly surprised we didn't catch any of it on the way out like i didn't see anything bubble up we see nothing on the surface here we have a lot less of those BBs and those bug shots. And even the fact that the, they're usually sitting on unprepped material, you could take a file and just kind of swipe at them and they're really easy to knock off. There is some point to prepping material. Obviously, if you don't prep it, you could get a bunch of porosity. But if you prep just enough, you can save some time from all these BBs that are rolling off the side. So it's still a good point to just only prep around where your weld area is gonna be, not much further. But not bad overall on the welding on rust. Fairly surprised and not surprised. Now, one of the last things that we're going to do is our travel angle. You are gonna see yourself throwing more BBs if you push it. If it's a slag process, you drag it. Slag, you drag, slag, you drag. So you always wanna try to carry a drag angle as you work around uh, something like this piece of pipe. But it, it can be tricky, so there's times where you might be starting to drag and then you lead into a push. A lot of times you'll see on half the part you'll have a nice weld and on the other half of the part, it's still a decent weld. It looks a little flatter and there's more spatter. Let's check it out. So all I'm gonna do here is just start at a drag and then move straight to a push on that second half.
Okay, so taking a look at this weld, there really wasn't a whole lot to see on the drag side from the start of the welds. And then we kind of really get no spatter right at this point where we're just dead on with it. And then as we move into that push, you can see all the spatter that we were throwing off the end of that puddle. So there's definitely a considerable amount of spatter difference from a drag or perpendicular angle compared to a push. You need to be keeping those things into consideration. You can throw a lot of BBs and if it's in a little tight spot, they're kind of a pain in the butt to get out. Now we're going to try to attempt the possible and make a good weld. We gotta have all those variables that we've considered all the way around corrected. We should have the right voltage and wire feed speed. We have the right polarity. The prep is to a minimum. I think we could have been a little bit better with that. We're gonna be trying to carry the right position all the way around, getting a nice wide stance, doing some dry runs, making sure that I can keep and maintain that drag angle. Trying to keep the spatter off of things, it's just really simple, guys. Just do all those things and put in a little bit of this anti-BB sauce. And you should be square business. No BB should stick in and around your weld zone. And then if there is, we'll talk about how we go about cleaning them up. Let's make a good bead. I'd say there's most certainly a lot less BBs on here. There's some tiny ones, you know, they're there. Still have a little bit of this elongated porosity. I had a comment a while back and it was referring to the fact that I was using some old wire that really wasn't worth using. And I, I apologize for all that. I'm trying to be resourceful for what I have. I don't do a whole lot of this type of welding, dual shield flux core anymore. Those spools are pretty expensive. So what I normally do is I go to a welding school and try to find an old spool that they're not using anymore and hope that it's pretty good. A little bit of BBs and buckshot in there. What we do about this is of course we dress our welds. You can run that wire wheel over there. It's likely you'll have a BB or two still left. There really isn't a whole lot that I need to clean up around on this base metal, but we do have some other ones. So you can opt for like a chisel and a hammer and just go around and just start chiseling off BBs. You could try just getting after it with a, a file. All in all, that stuff takes freaking forever. You could always go with one of these types of wheels like this 3M Cubitron 3. That's what we used to use back when I worked in pressure vessels when the nozzles weren't just three inches, they were like 36 inches in diameter and you had a lot to clean up. You couldn't have any BBs because of the ultrasonic testing that those vessels went under. So we would take one of these. Would bump the toes of your weld to make it look even. If you had a high spot where you tied in, you blended that down. I'll be honest, if your weld was straighter than mine, you wouldn't have to really go around it all that much. At the end of the day, you're not allowed to have any types of BBs. You should always be focused on quality control. There is an inspector, they're there to look at the weld. It's supposed to look some sort of type of way and it's not up to you, it's up to them to say what it's supposed to look like. So you gotta make it look like that. I used to hate when the QC would come by and tell me, oh, you gotta clean this up, flatten that up. I hated it, but it ultimately made me a better welder and I would stop cutting corners and start doing it the way they told me and it ultimately made me a better welder. Keep all that in mind when you're trying to get less spatter on your flux core welds, guys. Quality is important. We'll see you all in the next weld. Fucking birds, man. Going crazy. Hold on, let me scare these birds away. Get on, scat. Get out of my trees. I'm trying to make a YouTube video. I put that bead in the wrong spot. Dang it. <laughs>